whip crack which is from a tail. <laughs> How else could we get started to fire back up into some rookie wide receivers? A little Sunday afternoon wide receiver talk. Yeah, we're gonna today we're gonna we're gonna get into a little Christian Kirk first. Um, hard K. Hard K with the with the Kirk. Not to be confused with a Kurt. True. You know, don't you don't want to make those uh <laughs> As he was dominating dominating the SEC for three years, he was telling everybody, it's, it's Kirk with a K, everybody. So the highlights of his combine were a, were a 4-4-7-40. Um, he came in at, what, a 5'11", 200? Exacto mundo. Exacto mundo. And then a, a strong bench press ref from the young man, mm -hmm. at, looking like a grown man with that 20. Yeah, you can see it on the tape with the ridiculously good stiff arms, just pushing people by the face mask. Strong gun show and mush. <laughs> good mush. Boy, he's thick up. He got to like that. Yeah, he's a, he's a thick thick fella there coming out the slot at you. He's got uh, all sorts of good parts and pieces to his game. He shows up at A&M in, in 15, I believe, and comes right out there and just crushes. It's evident as soon as he steps on the field that he belongs and he's one of the better athletes on either side of the ball, right off the rip, he makes his presence felt. He goes uh, and plays Arizona State, six for a buck oh six and a touchdown. Um, he first then, game as a freshman. First game, and then he follows that up with, you know, four at, at Ball State, but I'm assuming I don't have that score in front of me, four for 43 and a touchdown. I'm assuming they probably blew him out. Probably didn't play too much in that game. And then he comes right back with a six, an eight, an eight, and a seven in the reception category, and a Two games over 100, a game at 77, and a game at 90. So just comes in there, guns a blazing, sure to help out his college dominator. Rocking that college, that <laughs> breakout age. Rocking yeah, that breakout rocking age. Rocking the breakout age. Oh, Sorry. the breakout age is definitely in the 90 plus percentile. Killing the breakout age. Crush that. But so <laughs> that, that's the kind of the 15 year comes right in, makes his presence felt. You guys want to uh, get into these 16 years where the, where the hype begins to ascend and keep building? Sure. I mean, Whatever you whatever you got, this guy's just all around electrifying. I mean, he's he's a a chain mover who can also hit the big play. It's it's fun to watch. It's hard not to get excited about him. The only thing I can really knock him for is maybe the midriff. But I mean, what are you gonna do? Ezekiel Elliott made that made that famous. I know. I don't really like it either. Okay. <laughs> um. I mean, well, the 2016 you work out. You do a lot of crunches. I can tell. Good right, job, buddy. Right. The Thanks. 20 the 2016 uh Bama TD catch. For me, the, the the catch in the sun, I call it. Um, I, he the concentration that it took to make that catch was ridiculous, and I you could see that in a lot. It, he plays in traffic, like you said. He comes out of the, out of the slot there, Casey. But he also he's he's all over the field. Yeah. I mean, you could especially through his 2016, 2017, um, especially in 2017. Not to get ahead of ourselves here, but as the the players kind of decrease around him. The defense tries to focus on him, and he's literally yeah, all creative. over the fort. They he's coming out of the backfield. He's he's constantly in motion, trying to get him get him separated. Freed but up. back to the catch in the sun against Bama, um, I saw an analyst tries to use a video that said that wide receivers aren't supposed to try to catch the ball like this in the NFL. I'm not gonna call any names out, um, but I thought it was just a ridiculously good high concentration catch. Looking back in the sun on a Saturday afternoon, the the analyst kind of brushed it off that the defender had his arm grabbed up, but not only is he working into the back of the end zone, trying to catch a ball dropping down, the defender's got him by an arm, so he's usually really just got a half of a hand and one arm out there. Right. He's looking back in the sun, makes a, makes a nice bread basket catch, dude's draped all over him, and I, if that catch is made on a Sunday, it's on ESPN. Oh, for sure. But then, you know, I got I thought it was a great catch, and I got an analyst trying to use that as a, as a clip saying that you're you're, you're not going to be able to touch work like that in touchdown college. Catch. That's like, what you want to do in the NFL. You got to be able to work through the uh, the the contact. Yeah, all you, that all that the adversity that's going to be in front sure. of you. Well, that's right. what he that's what he was trying to say. He tried to use that clip and said, "Hey, well, this isn't going to work on Sunday." And I'm like, "Well, that works on Sunday all day long." To even make that play possible, he's playing Alabama in 16, which he's had a he had a nice career against Alabama the whole time he was there. Sure, did. very but solid career. He, he eats that cushion up off the rip to get into the position to score on the fade route into the sun here, and just Domit eats that cushion, gets leverage on the guy. All the guy, the reason the guy's holding his arm is because his he's, he already, he's already got his back to him because he he burned him so bad. Exactly, and he's holding his arm, and yeah. he, he he still comes away with a great. Now it was a great, great little toss by Trevor Knight, and a really and a dropped really it dropped the, it right in the bucket there. Sure, but still, like he's getting his arm held. He burnt the guy up. This is Bama as the benchmark of great competition, and uh, was, I thought that was a great play. 
Yeah, I mean, well, that's a, that's the salt. That's a sixteen tape against Bama. So he's sitting there as a sophomore. There came right in. You know, didn't sh- didn't red shirt. So he's a very you know he, when you're playing Bama, you're playing against NFL defenders. Right. Maybe this not dude, across the board, but for the most part, you're playing against the best competition. Played him three times. Right. Freshman year in fifteen went seven for ninety. In the game, the second in sixteen, which you guys are talking about here, he went nine for fifty eight in that touchdown. Right. And then in seventeen comes back with another four for 52 and another touchdown, which was, a, was an awesome little play on a scramble drill. Comes back, helps his quarterback out. Right, but like I said, in 17, and Casey will tell us who all left here in just a second, but in 17, he's really the only offensive playmaker. Right. So just to even get four rookie, for 50 in a touch right. against playing, Bama is huge because how many times do you see Bama take away the other team's best player right. a la Bill Belichick type move? Sure. But you can't take away Christian Kirk because no. they put him all over the place. I mean, they did a pretty good job in 17 of taking away what he does best because it's a lot of screen passes and they really minimized his after-the-catch ability, and which is really he is a strong factor of his game that will – I'm sure we'll get to in, in depth here in a minute, but I mean, the Alabama did a good job, but he still he still broke off a touchdown. You know, right. he still got it done for his team and, and for, yeah. for your stats. And, and that touchdown in 17, it's a nice scramble drill by him again, helping his freshman quarterback out. Oh, what a sick catch! And, it was. A, and worked into the back of the end zone, and then tight saw, rope the, tight, yeah. tight rope the sideline, came back to the ball, caught the ball out of si- out of bounds, and kept a foot in bounds. Oh, it was like so two was a, yards out of bounds. Right. He was literally got parallel with the in, ground think, almost, yeah. and, and so. It was nasty eventually catch. eventually got his in that game. Now well, it's not as good as the other games that he had against Alabama, but that's still a nice career slate against the benchmark for solid competition. True. Um, so he has he has a, a productive basically year all around. Every time this guy's been on the field, absolutely. He's had eighty catches, eighty. Well, somebody got that in front of him. Uh, eighty, eighty three, and seventy one, but then seven nine and ten touchdowns respectively for a total of 26 touchdowns strong and this has been this has been like post johnny manziel texas a&m we took a step back as an offense kind of thing sure you know those those numbers might not be ridiculous but this is a five foot ten 200 pound man who's running around in the sec getting knocked down by linebackers all the time returning punts returning kicks and he just he's he just keeps coming he he's like Jay Wayne said. He's super solid for 200 pounds and 20 bench reps. Looks like a running back. He looks he looks like a running back. And I mean, I just he's such a safe player moving from the college to the NFL game because he's not is he does it's not a finesse game with him, but he's not um, it's not all power either. You know, right. the vision is there with the kickoffs, obviously, and the punt returns. The vision is there. He's one of the and best kick returner, punt returners in the nation. Him and him and Pettis are sure. two of the best. Right. And what I like about it, and I obviously you would love to see the three cone drills and then the, the shuttles and all that from this from the uh, combine to be lower numbers. But what I like about it is when a guy like this who's just been tearing up defenses, he's impossible to cover, he's impossible to hardly even tackle, and then he goes to the combine and he doesn't blow the doors off with numbers, right. just like a Dalvin Cook. You know what I mean? It's like, all right, well, it's maybe. still a solid 40. Right, right. Solid, solid, which is great because you talk about a potential slot guy, but he's got the long speed to go with it. Right. And well, that's, so, I mean, I just, I really love Christian that's, Kirk. That's as why a I have prospect. him, you know, up up in that top five area, probably sitting at five, maybe just a, a he's, scooch ahead of Anthony Miller for me, but just because I feel like he is, really safe like he's leading that second tier of receivers after the big four i feel like i could get you're going to get the kick and punt return stuff out of him and he's going to be a slot guy and and he he plays the screen game well that whip that he has nickel for every screen and whip he caught oh yeah that whip game is proper and you can't do anything about it he eats you up with that and then again his short to intermediate stuff is is fantastic. That's what you love about his game, and the run after the catch is awesome. But then he has plus ability to stretch the field for you, right? Mm-hmm. Which how could you, I just feel like it's it's just a nice layup of a player to to equate to scoring fantasy points for you. Now, obviously, we get into landing spots and all that, and all these guys can slide up a couple of pegs depending on the situation that they land in. But I feel like Kirk is is pretty safe and and uh, insulated in his in his little area about what he's going to do for your team and, and how he's going to put fantasy points on, on your squad. I would agree with that. I, I didn't see him pressed a ton, but when he was pressed, he's pretty if you're physical. you're in the slot, like you're he, not going to get pressed. You, yeah, that's true. Tough to be pressed. He played outside every once in a while, um, but, I mean, he's really fast off the line of scrimmage. Like, he's quick at the snap of the ball. The routes are pretty crisp, as you were mentioning. Like, you can't guard that whip. Um, 
they gave him a bunch of like third and short screen passes that he just turned. You know, he got those three to four yards. Yeah, like, it was like a running play basically for them. Which, I mean, he's basically a running back after he catches the ball. I love him over the middle of the field. No fear. Um, looked awesome on a, on a crossing route or a deep crossing route. He'll go down super low and dig a ball yeah, low got, out of the ground. I got oh. that. As, oops, sorry. Ooh, a little squeaky there. <laughs> need, a, need some WD. <laughs> but I got that as one of my uh, one of my notes too. He'll 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 dig it out the dirt, which you gotta like to see that. Right. You need to see the replay to make sure he still caught it. And yeah, he, he's got those hands underneath it. It's really nice. Um, he he works well in in the tight spaces. There's that play where uh, he was running that. He was from the slot and it was kind of like a. I don't know what you call it. The running backs run it sometimes. Where it, it's like so a, it was 17, and they're design, They're trying to figure out ways to get the ball in his hands and get coverage off of him and kind of disguise him a little bit. He lines up in the backfield. And the Wake Forest game or is it Arkansas? Yeah, he, I, don't, I don't know. It's, but it's a Texas route, basically. Right. It's, it is, it's the Wake right. Forest game, but he is in the angle, backfield. He's yeah. straight up beside the quarterback. Yeah, and he runs that little angle He runs route. the angle. And the ball when, gets on him quick. Right. Right when he makes his move off, off off his cut to come back into the middle of the field, the ball's out and in his ear hole. Right. And, and he's, he beats his man. He gets in front of him. and The reactionary skills to get your hands up and catch it off of his helmet as yeah. it's on him because he was a little late getting his head around. No, it, yeah, it literally hit him in the face mask. Right. And it's that the concentration again. That's the, one of many plays that I saw that just highlights this guy's concentration. And we, we try to find guys that, you know, like the spatial awareness that Casey talks about and that type of stuff. The, the quote unquote gamers that the you know, the straight metric guys don't believe in that you, it matters when you put it, when you can put it all together, right. you know, and this, this guy, like you said, he's got no fear over the middle. Um, and I mentioned this, like the 2017, they literally are moving this guy all over the place. He's in the backfield. He's steady in motion. He looks like he's probably running 10 miles every football game, but because they're trying to get him away from the defense, they're just focusing on this guy right. who, how many times you see a defense focus on a slot guy. But the cool thing about Christian Kirk is when I was listening to Sigmund Bloom's podcast, when he had Matt Harmon on, Matt Harmon would, you know, his access through the NFL network, he said that he interviewed Christian Kirk and Christian Kirk, he... Matt Harmon verbatim was like, Kirk is adamant that he can play outside and he wants to, and he's you know he he's not just a slot guy. And of course, the wide receivers not going to get to pick that. The coaching staff will tell him where to play in yeah. the NFL. He's got he'll have bosses, but just the mindset of not only that's what I do. I have the intention of being able to play everywhere, and I want to be a number he's one. He's got enough I, size and speed to go outside. Right. He he played everywhere in 2017 because he had yeah, to. Well, they, they were mixing it up. It's because in 16 you have a, a squad that's those receiver rooms is Ricky Ricky Seals Jones, which NFL you know, tight say, end. Say what you want about him, but I mean he's in the NFL right now playing, and some people are hopeful that he's going to convert to a nice tight end. Sure. At some point, you got Josh Reynolds, who is a, was one of the best ball trackers, deep threats in the game last year which stretched the defense deep right and then you got speedy Knoll, who, mm -hmm. who was was a pretty solid uh college player and trevor knight was a transfer from oklahoma who'd played many a big college games on a saturday i don't love trevor knight's game but so now this, you, this is just a guy who's been around knows what to do exactly a quality quarterback in the college level and right. then you slip over to 17 you got freshmen you got a, in the you ball. got a bunch of yeah a bunch of freshmen thrown in the ball he becomes kind of the leader in the locker room and in, in, in the wide receiver room kind of deal mm -hmm. Um, and like you said, we're, they're moving him all around, trying to get him a little bit more involved uh, and get the defenses away from him. And, and he was the offense, right. like Jay Wayne said on third and two, like on second ten, third and ten. Anytime you needed yards, it was throwing it. They were throwing it to Kirk. Absolutely. Right. So and, and he's got that long build up speed, man. I just love the the, the chain moving ability combined with the lid lifting yeah. aspect of his game. It's not quite. He's not quite as explosive as like a a, a, a Washington, right? But it's it's still pretty impressive how he can pop that thing off. And I mentioned that, you know, just his build looks like he looks like a running back, and that's definitely the case with the ball in his hands. It's probably one of the best aspects of his game. He's got that Jarvis Landry aggression after the catch. It's fun to watch. He's great in traffic. Just put him in a punt return situation. I know. That's yeah. basically what it is. <laughs> yeah. Like, when he's in traffic, after the catch, you, you think he's about to get tackled, and he's got one more juke, one more cut that just spring more yards. Mm -hmm. And then he'll stiff arm you and lower that shoulder. But, like, he rarely takes a big hit at the same time. So, it's just Yeah, it's yeah he's really, not ducking out of bounds either. Right. Well, like, in the in the screen game in that Wake Forest, uh, he's he's got a nice little screen for a TD from the nine, gets a hand catch. Gets the block set up upfield, uses it uses a cut to set up one block and, and move downfield, and then he stiff arms Jesse Bates, who's a one of the you know a pretty decent prospect, maybe a one day, of the top a day two, day three yeah. kind of prospect at, at at defensive back or safety. Just 
plants a stiff arm in his face for, for a nice Put him score. to the ground. And that was a silly stiff arm. Then he tippy toes down the sideline for a huge TD, trailing in by 10 into the third quarter there. And, you know, n- nice nice uh, work for his team there. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's just got good speed to get to the edge. It's just, he's just a joy to watch, man. And then another thing, one last thing I'll say, is that there's solid, consistent effort in the blocking. I enjoyed watching him block. He sprung some big runs. He's, he's definitely an efforter. He's a high-motor guy who's going to bring it every day for his teammates and his team. And, and I, I'm I'm excited about putting him on my team. Yeah. Sure. I'll end up with the clutch thing. I mean, he's against Arkansas in the in the, yeah. the overtime game. He's the t- he's getting the touchdowns in overtime. He's returning the 100-yard kickoff to put him in overtime. He's 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 the well, he's the clutch player. To start in that in that Arkansas game, you see everything you want to see from him. You see there's a there's a play, it's the first possession of the game. It's like third and six. There's a freshman quarterback in there. He runs a little 10-yard hitch to the first down on third and six or whatever oh i know where you're going with this thank and you for bringing this up kinda, before we got out kind of works to the middle of the field there yeah because he sees it, it's zone coverage he sees it zone he sits down there there's two three guys around him so he keeps working instead of just sitting in that zone waiting for guys to close down around him he keeps working to an open spot on the field well now he looks back and sees his quarterback who's a true sure. freshman rolling right yeah so he breaks away and starts rolling right with his guy Gives him a wide open play for a huge touchdown in this game, which was a barn burner. Yeah. And, you know, helps out his young quarterback, does everything you want him to see. It's a smart route to start with to, to keep it moving from, from that first down To work down that mark. zone. And yeah. then to, to recognize and, and bail his quarterback out and play that kind of schoolyard ball yeah. is, is fantastic I'm so him. I'm so glad you brought that play and up. And then a huge kickoff return almost to forgot. set up overtime. That was, I, that was one of the funniest parts about once you get in there and really study Christian Kirk some with the film, you – more often than I've heard for any wide receiver, the the the, the play by play guy on TV kept keeps saying blown coverage. You know, oh, the look at the he breaks wide open, blown coverage. But it was Christian Kirk breaking the coverage down, like you just right. described, working it back towards the middle of the field, seeing his quarterback get flushed out, then breaking into a wide open space in the, yeah. in the on, down the sidelines to catch that ball, and it made it look easy. And sure, the way this camera angles can set up, it's hard to tell sometimes, and it just looks like a blown coverage. But over and over and over with some of the big plays from Christian Kirk, you just see that he broke them down. Versus, versus the defense necessarily making yeah. a mistake, an unforced error, if you will, like we're talking about tennis. Like he's, it wasn't an unforced error. Christian Kirk made you do that yeah. over and over and over again. He gets, he breaks a touchdown for overtime, then he scores the a touchdown in overtime to give his team the victory, I believe, on a, on a nice little out route and just completely burns burns oh, his yeah, man in one on one coverage and slot and corner route. The, really, the guy throws his uh, the guy throws a nice ball to the outside where only he could get him, but he. The way he played his man and, and screened his man on the little out, there was no chance he could get to him, set it up well. Same thing in the Wake Forest game. He comes back and, and gets his team a touchdown, I think, with, let's see here, with with five minutes to go, gives his team the lead in the fourth quarter with a, with a nice little uh, kind of fake post corner route here. Just doesn't even break stride, kind of subtle, eats up the cushion that the defender gave him is about seven yards, eats him up, gives him just a little... Subtle gear down and two pokes inside like he's hitting the post and then just roasts him back to the corner wide open for a touchdown. Boom. And it was just like you, you, there's all sorts of great the, pieces and parts of this game. The screen game's good. He's got routes like that. He can beat you deep over the top. Right. You need a punt return in the clutch. You need a kick return in the clutch. Boom, Whatever boom, you need boom. Him to do, he can and come another shot of rumple. You can hand it to him. He's going to be in Madden. He's going to have a high awareness rating. Sure. That's what I like about the cat. All right. Well, let's get down to brass taxes here. So the top, the top four uh, rookie wide receivers, you can kind of argue any way you want to go, but it's Cortland Sutton, Calvin Ridley, DJ Moore, and... and, and uh, Not in that order, just naming they, them. Yeah. Washington, Washington, right? Washington. So just naming the four off. Is is Kirk, does he slide into the top so five for I, you guys? I mentioned when, at one point when I was telling you why I liked him and why I mentioned that he slid into the top five for me. Yeah. Um, just because of the reasons of that... He is. He's probably going to work from the slot. He's a great slot guy. He can do everything you want him to do from the slot. The short and intermediate parts of his game are fantastic. I love all the routes that he can run. I love the whip route. I love the screen game that he has. So he can do everything you need him to do from that area of the field. And then it's the plus, the deep plays, and right. and the vertical speed puts it over the top the for open me. Open field and after to, the catch. Sure, but that that comes this. along with being a good slot receiver. That all kind of goes. You, yeah. If you're, if you're, you know. Fair. 
I could, I'm agree. I'm, I'm going to completely agree with that as well. Just uh, for me, it's a safety factor. Like there's no chance that Christian Kirk isn't a productive NFL wide receiver. I think that there's a potential for the, you know, the upside on maybe like a ESB or a Dion Kane that we're going to talk about in a minute. And Equinemius St. Brown, for those of you guys not aware on that ESB reference yet, like there's maybe some potential number one receiver upside on some of those two guys that maybe works out. Yeah. You know, for your for your fantasy team, because remember, we're not building real NFL teams here. My fantasy team, I know I can cancel. I know that I can t- can lean on Christian Kirk if I was to put a spot and make and draft him in a rookie draft, put some equity into him on my team. It's going to pay off, right? Like, there's no chance that this guy's not going to be a good NFL wide receiver. He may not be a Hall of Famer, but he is going to be productive, no uh, doubt about it. Absolutely, and we talked about uh, kind of landing spots just a little while ago, and any of these guys are susceptible to moving up or down depending That's on That's a prerequisite the that, for that right. conversation. But, you know, I liked Anthony Miller a good bit. I think Anthony Miller does a lot of stuff. He's, he's tenacious, a little bit different build. Um, but just a, just worked for everything. Wasn't a, a huge recruit. Didn't come in as a freshman. Had to, you know, take everything that Anthony Miller got. And he plays that way. He's got that kind of mentality about him. And I liked Anthony Miller. And then I watched Kirk. And I just like the safety factor. He's two years younger than Anthony Miller. A little bigger. I just I like played against a little bit better competition. Right. But Anthony Miller did his thing and c- consistently crushed his competition. But I I I like I feel very for whatever reason. Deep in my plums, I just feel <laughs> extremely safe drafting Kirk. Sure, I don't not feel safe drafting Miller. I think if you want to draft Miller at five as your five guy, like that's kind of where I have these two guys. I have them at kind of five and six right now, and and but with Kirk as the advantage uh, over Anthony Miller right now. Yeah, and I think uh, I think I could agree with that. I like Anthony Miller as much as the next guy, but I I think I have to slide Kurt in here at five. So uh, I think that'll wrap up old Christian. Yeah, sure. Well, you, you can't really leave it. I mean, Golden Tate, right? I mean, I, I just had to throw that name. Everybody knows that everybody said it in. So if you haven't heard it yet and you're listening to us for your number one most used player comp for this comp. guy, the, mo- the most used oh, player comp. Oh, we love comp. the comps. Right. What's the comps? What's your comp? Because so, if you can't comp him, then right. So, But he he's he's as close to uh, putting a Golden Tate, of a rookie Golden Tate on your team as anybody in this draft. Yeah, All Golden right, Tate or, or a Jarvis Landry little kind Jarvis, of guy. Right. Little Jarvis right. in him, Which, but with some explosiveness. Some, some people don't like that guy. I love that but guy. I want that guy on my Give me team. Those catches. Just safe, safe points for me. As, as, yeah. as, as Give me those catches and a, guy, and a guy that's hard to be tackled. So if he can catch it and he's hard to tackle, then you um, the yak will make up for the A dot. Let's roll. Exactly. <laughs> Great point to end on there. The yak will make up for the A dot if the A dot even matters. Get out of it here doesn't. with that. All right, let's go to break. We'll grab another beer. We'll be back when we're married to the game podcast. For your pleasure. Pleasurable, pleasurable. (laughs) ¿Qué pasa, amigos? We're back with Prospecto Número Dos on Telemundo. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. We're we're back as the crack dictates. We are ready to jump into prospect number two today. We're going Dion Kane. This might be a little lengthy because Jason has tiger paws everywhere and they're orange. It's kind right. of gross. We'll see what happens here. But to tease the ESB, we know you want to hear about Equinemia St. Brown, but you need to hear about the upside of Dion Kane. So and the downside of Dion Kane. Right. It's coming at you. There's all of that. It's a tale of two stories here. <laughs> Jekyll and Hyde here, huh? Yep. Well, let's start with the combine. Oh, yeah, the comp. Right. Fine. So a yeah, little bit of f- discrepancies in heights and weights, depending on where you go. Uh, <laughs> There's a couple different a, NFL On clicks. ESPN and sports reference, you got him at 6'1", 190. On one of the combine pages, he's 6'2", 202. I think that's the official way in. Right. And then on another NFL uh, combine page, he's six brought five. to you by the NFL at NFL.com, backslash <laughs> combine profiles, backslash Deion Kane. He's 6'5", 205, which is not accurate. What right? are they doing? I don't what know is, what NFL What are you doing? doing? It doesn't even matter. They have so much money, and you're going to get people back. They could mess up like this, and it right. doesn't even matter. But they don't care about the details. No, they so don't care. Funny. I think it's 6'2", 202. 6'2", 202 is what we're going right. with. He was a, uh, a top-five performer in the three-cone with a sub-seven seconds and a top-five performer in the 40 with a 4'4", four, 3. But he had a bad burst score, but... Two out of three. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> little Stupid. little little mid midday meat. <laughs> midday <laughs> meat loaf. So I mean 
How can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat? Fast in a straight line and and solid in the three cone at six point seven one, which mm, is, is nice to see. Solid three cone with old Dion Kane. You guys want to start with sixteen or seventeen? Mm. Let's uh, let's go sixteen. All right, so sixteen. You're 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 riding high. You're national champs. Mm. You got Deshaun Watson, one of the best quarterbacks going. You got <gasps> Wayne Gallman, who was a solid running back. And when you're watching Deion Kane, it's all you see is Gallman and Leggett and Mike Williams just crushing all sure. over the field. And those are all the guys that you lost into 17. Right? Well, wait, wait, wait. 2016, during the season, you got beat by Bama in the championship. So 2016, you're working your way to be the champs, right? Mm-mm. Huh. Yeah. 15, we lost Alabama. Correct. So tw- the year of 2016. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. During Just the season, like, right. you're not the champs. Right. Uh, you got beat in Bam- by Bama. After the season, you're the champs. So 2017, you're riding high, but everybody knows you lost to Sean Watson. Right. I just, I you lost all those guys. Put those dates well, for I was just correct. Kinda, yeah, okay. sure. You're you're riding high after the season, but you, yes, you got you are the eventual champs. You got Gallman, mm. you got Leggett, you got Mike Williams, you got Deion Kane, you got a great defense, and you and most importantly, you got Deshaun Watson and go. Right. So you're you're seeing when you watch the sixteen film, it's 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 a lot more fun to watch than the seventeen film, obviously. Sure. <laughs> Deshaun Watson is Deshaun Watson and Kelly Bryan is Kelly Bryan, probably not gonna be the starter there next year. Um it's fair. But it's just it's night and day, and when you and when you watch the sixteen film, it's it's great throws by Deshaun, great reads by Deshaun, dropping dimes. He's dropping dimes. He's throwing them away from the coverage, right. throwing he, him open, throwing him open, and all that good stuff. And obviously, you have all sorts of weapons around you. Clemson loses a ton of players after winning the national championship, um, and in seventeen, you know he's supposed to become the man. But uh, you see a lot of that. All the numbers go down. Pretty much all the numbers except for receptions go down. Right. Which, when you lose all these dudes and you lose Deshaun Watson, I think it's fair to say all the numbers for everyone are going to go down. Yeah. Right. Much more run-centric team in 17. Yeah. Yeah. It it, it didn't surprise anybody. But I was a little bit surprising that just a ridiculous drop-off in yards per catch. Well, people will use it as a knock because, oh, you're supposed to be the man now and you're you're this five-star recruit. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you kind of flopped a little bit. But, I mean, what are you supposed to do? I mean, you're just not as good as you were. Well, like, you, yeah, well, I mean, that's 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 what I was about to get to. So, in 2016, Deion kane has got th- only 38 catches for 724 yards at a 19.1 clip. That's like what James Washington type stuff. So, but again, like, you're, you're inflated because Deshaun Watson's throwing you open and Deshaun Watson's dropping dimes and Deshaun Watson is there's what he is. There's a lot of field to cover. And there's, ton- and there's lots of field to cover and there's tons of players to cover yeah. for the defense. Their attention is split up, like you said. So in 2017, the attention's not as split up as much and you're definitely not fearing Kelly, Kelly Bryant like you were Deshaun Watson. Right. But if you could take that... 19 point C in 2016 Deshaun uh, Deion Kane's coming back out of the doghouse where he gets suspended going into the postseason for the Clemson right so he's he breaks into 2016 in a crowded just t- the depth chart is just ridiculously strong for Clemson obviously led by Deshaun Watson but if you so in 2017 Deshaun Watson's gone but if you take those targets and catches if you take those catches times a 19.1 average then you got 1100 yards this year if Deshaun Watson was still there to throw him the ball I know that's not fair because I just right. did you know, I took him I took you know stats from two years and put them together but you know so you got a player who could be putting together numbers <laughs> like the wide receivers put together that are talked about as a first round draft pick but the real NFL executives are going to look at it and say just exactly what Casey just said. You lost to Sean Watson, and we understand that. Yeah, yeah well, you were supposed to but be you'd the like man. To, you'd like to see uh, this guy who's, who's this, top, again, top five recruit or top five-star recruit dominate a little better, even with, with – I mean, it's still he's still a, an okay quarterback. It's not like you just – Yeah, it was the first year, though. I right. Mean, but he's still playing on Clemson's schedule. You'd, and you'd it, still like to see him be a more dominant force in – playing ball out there so i could i can get the knock a little bit you, you were waiting to see what was going to happen and he didn't quite like i think if mike williams was put in this situation i think mike williams would have had a better year than Deion kane had uh, that's fair i think that's fair i mean i think mike williams overall is a better wide receiver so i'll well, give yeah. you that for sure um but i mean it's just it's a, it's a tale of two different guys like you said you know when you watch the 16 tape it's, it's evident that this guy has all the skills necessary to succeed in the NFL. 
you know, maybe he's better suited to be a number two guy, maybe a Robin to someone's Batman, like, like you said before, Case. Um, but, I mean, I think he's also got a really high ceiling. It's just a matter of whether or not he can put it all together because he's got the speed and the playmaking ability that, I mean, I personally really covet. I love this downfield receiver, and, like, the best part of his game is – how he has that late separation at the top of a vertical route. Like, I don't know if yeah. it's just good stacking or it's the deep speed or maybe a combination combination of both, but it's it's super attractive. He just has a knack for pulling away at the last minute. Like, he just gains yeah. three to four to five those, yards worth of separation. Those are basically my words in bold here, you know, my Deion Kane kind of category here. I, I don't believe he is a number one at the next level. I don't think he's a centerpiece for your offense. I think he could be a great number two for somebody. Again, like you said, a Robin to somebody's Batman. I don't think this is the guy you want to build your offense and feature around, but he's. I think he could be a really solid two. I don't like the fact that after every play where he makes that might have been like a decent play, he's got to get up and tell the defensive back about it. Yeah, like, yeah. he's always bit, in the dude's face. Be a little face. bit more professional about your about like your game here. Like you're and, gonna and, like you've made a good catch before, a, and you're gonna make another one. You're a five star recruit. You're supposed to be one of the baddest dudes on the field, right? Yeah, and it didn't always pan out that way. Um, but what what again? Getting back to the bold letters here that I have is. I think he's really good at getting his hips on top of or in front of the defender. Like the I think the kids like to call that stacking these days. Okay, <laughs> that's what the kids say. Um, and the 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 speed is very deceptive. It never looks like he's moving very fast. He's very fluid out there. It's and, effortless. And it's very effortless. And all of a sudden, like he's the ball's up in the air, and he's just the the next gear that he has is better than most people's. Right. You and the, the ball tracking skills to go with that next gear are outstanding, whether he's running under the ball or I going to the ground to secure it. I think they're good. Coming back to the ball on an underthrown pass, like more times than not, he's yeah. reeling in that ball. Yeah. You'd like to see him be better be better in the uh, like ball tracking and, and going up and getting the ball. I mean, in, he'll track in, a ball. He, 50, he's, not, 50 balls. he's not necessarily going to go up and attack the ball. Right, he doesn't. He doesn't crush it in the air. He can. Right. I think he. I think he. I think he has better going up and attacking the ball aspects to his game than Equinemius does. Yeah. If I had to point something out like, but like if, that, but if it's he not get the best, neck, it's if he not, can get neck and neck with his guy, and you can put the ball in front of him, he's he's got this the the second gear or whatever gear, third, fourth, whatever gear you want right. to call it, is phenomenal. It's one of right. the best parts of his game. He can just turn it on and it looks effortless. Right. He's really good at getting off the ball. It's, I, I think he's kind of hard to get your hands on and wrangle. Absolutely, he's big and physical. He's he's explosive off the line of scrimmage. He can cut. He he's got a various release moves yeah. he can wipe you in and out he can get the outside leverage or the quick, inside leverage yeah, quick release and, and going left and right and picking which side he wants to go it's to tough to get your hands on him and if you balance, do he yeah. can fight you off right because you didn't get a good clean jam on him right because and you, his, his you first, see him beat the press his lot. first little one two step off the line is, is hard to control and you're you're worried about you know there's plenty of tape where people he's getting beat beating people downfield especially yeah. in the 16 where you're putting that 19 Yards a catch, kind of James Washington esque. Obviously, much lower yardage totals and target totals, but overall, yeah, one still, of those games in sixteen with Deshaun, it was the first play of the game. It was like a sixty-five yard touchdown to Kane, just blew the top off, like yeah. you're saying. Crushed but Syracuse. You, I think it might have been yeah. Syracuse. Uh, you mentioned that he's you, Casey's not seeing this guy as a build your offense around this kind of receiver, and um, a lot of people are making it out that there may be not necessarily even one that we can think of. But the of. ceiling is good. No, no, yeah, I'm just saying. But, like, even the set, go to the big four receivers, a lot of the big-time draft nicks of this community are saying that there might not even be a top – that that guy that is that number one player at, at the top of the wide receiver ranking. So the reason I say that is because against a, the Deion Kane of the, world, of the world here, on average DLF rookie draft, he's going about – wide receiver 11 so in the rookie draft he's going to go farther down with the quarterbacks tight ends and running backs mixed in so just wide receiver 11 as an average off the board i feel like there's a lot of upside with Deion kane here is with the for your rookie draft just pulling him that's that's what i meant but you know there, there is a, there's some positive and negative here but i think that the Deion kane here going into your rookie draft is going to be a bit disrespected slash I think that the NFL draft is going to draft him higher than a lot of people think. I'm not calling him. I'm not saying he's going to be a second round pick or anything, but it wouldn't surprise me at all when I watch the Deion Kane. He looks like a to me. He looks like an NFL wide receiver. Oh, he definitely looks like an NFL receiver, just not a not a centerpiece. And and I'm not as excited about him as some of these other guys. That's why I have 
those first five in front of him, and then probably he's probably near the back end of the ten mm-hmm. for me. I you know I just I saw a lot of other guys do a lot of other things that I liked more than what I saw from Deion Kane. Now he's a good prospect and there's a good ceiling, which is why I'm in taking him. Exactly, that's right. what I'm trying. That's what I was trying to say. Like but, this, yes. the ceiling is farther out there than for for him than than players that I might that I will end up having ranked higher than him. And I was mentioning that with Christian Kirk earlier. The floor is so high on Christian Kirk. I'm ranking him really high because of that because it's safe. And the floor is kind of the floor is kind of low for Deion Kane, and so, and a lot of that is is to be determined on and and landing spot, yada yada yada, all that good stuff. But I I think his ceiling is is pretty far up there. He needs to get 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 somewhere and and establish a, a, a strong work ethic and and maybe a at- little bit of a slight attitude change and get just get like more business oriented. Just like I you think, said, every be, time he makes a big catch, that. he wants to tell the so, defensive back about which it. Which I'm fine with that. Like I you if you want to compete and and you worked hard and you did your thing and and you know and but, you don't know what that guy's saying to him either. Sure, you know, Good but point, I mean, Jay. but it, but it's every time. It yeah. is. It's, it's very, almost every time. So it's very like maybe often. maybe the guy's saying something to him, but he probably said some shit to him. Right. 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 And like if the every time part is what stacks up to me like if you do it every once in a while or you get into a game where you're you're this choppy and you get and that's just a one-time thing that's fine but i just as a as a teammate that's going to drain me. there's some big drops as a teammate in there as, well. as a coach that's going to drain me there's some big drops in there as well with Deion kane and some in some decent spots where you'd like to see him you know come 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 away with with some plays he's also make he makes some good plays he's he's obviously I don't want to kill this, and it's a five-star recruit. You can take that for what it was, for what it is. Sure. But I mean, he was obviously a, a, a well-respected big prospect coming into here, um, and obviously they don't always pan out, but he's panning out just fine. But you're, this is to be expected. Like this, you should be really good, and I'm just not sure that he quite even really lived up to exactly where he should be at the right. college level. So that's why I'm just a little bit more concerned about him at the next level. Well, let, let's, let's like get is into he willing? The- is he because he, he could be? He should be maybe. F- higher up this board but he's not right, because he didn't take advan- full advantage and maybe do everything he could to establish himself as one of these better receivers good i like well, the, that the main question is does he have it all together between the ears right yeah so let's really let's let's get into these negatives here because i got some bullet points about really it was really and 2015 you got, and you got here. that inside information tiger love like right you're, you're nobody's tuned in more on the on the airwaves these days than you are with clemson so let's see what they let's see what you got over there so so casey you mentioned the drops there are definitely some horrendous drops so you're just like what's going on man like and it makes you want to question his hands because overall i think the hands are really strong and, and sticky but then he just has laps of mental focus and he, and he tons of drops, man. That's like a huge knock on him. And I remember it. He used to get benched as a freshman because he's not he's dropping it, and you just like wanting to pull your hair out. Like, come on, man, catch a ball, right? Yeah. So it's, it's his focus thing, and like he was benched in his freshman year versus Miami, which they they classified as a need. He needed an attitude adjustment. Uh oh. Right, which he got all <laughs> upset about, but then just put his head down and kept working and, and, and got back on the field. Then he was suspended for both of those bowl games in uh, 2015 for failing a drug test. Just marijuana. Thought it was cocaine, but it wasn't cocaine. That's cocaine just his last name. Cocaine gets out of your system way too fast to fail a drug <laughs> test. Right, <for> exactly. <laughs> Can't catch exactly. me with that. So, you know, that's 15 when we lost to Alabama in the national championship. Um, he was suspended for both of those games. Um, he wanted to transfer. He wanted to get out, but his mom wouldn't let him transfer Clemson. Good. Mom made him stay. Like mama already. Right? So it's just, it's, it's, can he get past those? And that, that was all basically his freshman year. And you didn't really hear too, too much about him moving forward, right? He still struggled with drops and he still struggle, struggles with, with uh, fa- uh, penalties, penalty mm-hmm. flags, a lot of yeah. false starts, a Mental lot of times. Mistakes. He, focus. Right. It's opposite of Christian Kirk. Go exactly. ahead. Sorry. And, and you, you go you go to 17 and obviously the numbers the numbers aren't great. But if you go back to 16, he's got that, that big average and 38 on 38 catches for 724 yards and a 19 point one average and nine catches is, is a solid day. But that whole offense was also eating. Right. Like he's tearing it up. Like Artavis Scott had 76 receptions, 618, 614 yards and, you know, not a, not a ton of touchdowns, but five, which isn't terrible. Um, Leggett averaged 16 yards a catch. Yeah, he had 46 receptions. That's more than Deion Kane had. 736 yards. Hunter Renfro had more receptions. Obviously, he's that's kind of what he does a yeah. little bit. But Renfro. you know, four, 44 yards for 495 and six touchdowns. Like this is that 2016 unit was a machine. Right, it was a machine, and you would have liked to see Deion Kane assert himself even more in that 
machine. Well, that's what I was saying, though. He's coming off to getting suspended in the terrible rookie season. I want to transfer. And that suspension Mama led me into to get spring right. practice and stuff. He exactly. was suspended even more than just those two bowl games. So, I mean, th- there's definitely the negative things that you can point out about Kane, and, and there's definitely concentration issues, and it's 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 just a matter of whether he can pull it all together. And and I can I, I understand the worries, and and my heart wants to go Deion Kane, but my head says I should go equanimous you know Mm -hmm. and put him ahead of them but uh i mean the the good is just is really good and those first couple of steps off the line of scrimmage are a doozy and he's he's got different speeds to his game he's got little subtle nuances oh yeah head fakes and hip sinkage and everything you're looking for from he's a got fluid pieces for wide receiver 6.73 cone drill tells you some of that too exactly and this dude will go over the middle of the field like a boss there's no fear there he'll he's drop got it a, but he'll, he might <laughs> drop it but it's not because he's afraid of taking the hit it's that focus Mm-mm. um he's got great awareness on the field and he's got good body control he can contort to make a catch outside of his frame he crushes a back shoulder fade i think he's undergraded after the catch you don't see a ton of after the catch stuff with him but then all of a sudden he can take a screen pass to the house for a huge play like he's he's pretty lethal in the open field because of that speed and i just i'm willing to gamble i'm definitely willing to put him on my team oh, and, I, and there, I, the upside is there i don't mind putting him on my team i'm just going to take a couple of guys who i know got got into their situation and dominated the way i want to see them dominate and, and took advantage of their situation and maybe i didn't see Dion kane quite take advantage of the situation like i'd like to see him take advantage of the situation but but the ceiling <clears> is <throat> worth the you know some a, a little bit of a later round pick to me that right. there could be something really good. I think he could be well. I mentioned awesome. I meant Jay Wayne says gambling. I mentioned the wide receiver average of being picked ten as wide receiver. So I just sorted it through the the entire rookie class here and averages out to be pick thirty. Um, and it, not a lot of fluctuation in those. You know you can see the different drafts and the numbers and stuff. Not a ton of fluctuation. So you're talking about a mid third round pick, which is it's a gamble all day anyway. It's not um, a gamble. I'll take it. Yeah. No. 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 The mid round third, thir- the middle third round pick on anybody's. You're gambling on any. Throw. Yeah. You're dart throwing on any right. pick you can. Why not make take in that a stab spot. on this oh, dude? Oh, if you're going to yeah. give me Deion Kane in the third, I'll take that all day long. That's, so that's I said this earlier. Day. I think that based on I hate to me. Based on what I, you see him running around on a on a on a field catching balls and and playing and playing around with the defense, I say that I think that the NFL is going to draft him higher than what the fantasy football world thinks about him right now. But given everything about what Jay Wayne has brought to us on the other side of the lines, outside off the field, it will be very interesting to see what the NFL and the, what a team, what a GM and, right. a, and a coach and, and a, a team president thinks and say, after the interviews. Right. And and and, and, and Luckily for him, this was Kane, all freshman, these were all exact, freshman issues. Deion Kane's not the first diva right. that no, needed a second no, no. chance. He's not the first diva that needed a third chance, right. you know, so. And this dude is an alpha male. Like, he's he's a guy that's got handshakes with everybody and he's he's t- constantly talking and and boosting people up and maybe he was just showing for the mic'd up little thing that they put out but i mean he seems like he's the alpha you know he is that wide receiver attitude of i'm the best and you know number eight's always open baby like you know this is this is another and this is another example of why your rookie draft is so much better after the nfl draft because this is the kind of thing where it's get out of here with your pre-draft the, rookie the, draft. The, the, the where where this guy is selected is one of those. I like to say this a lot. It's must must watch TV. The NFL draft. I can't wait to figure out who decides to either a say Deion Kane's our guy. And we're going to take him higher than people think, or b everybody's like, uh, we talked to this guy, and I'm not so sure he's not going to. Yeah. You know, his focus. He can't. He only takes one though. Right. Right. So I'm I'm right. highly interested to see where he goes and when he goes. Like Arizona Cardinals need help. Sure, they do, and th- this is a, this would be a really good pickup. Cowboys for them. need help. They're I mean, down to a take a guy with places that need help. Pretty mm-hmm. much everybody San is Francisco going to Dallas. Take a shot Cowboys ain't taking Deion Kane. I can tell you that they just got rid of a guy who. Oh, they love. They love them. They love them. No way. Love them. They're, They're talking about taking Callaway. They're changing it up. Let's let's uh let's wrap this train up and get to ESB. Let's wrap it up we'll before love. flexing. Before flexing. <laughs> let's take it a break. Hit us up on Twitter if you disagree with any of this stuff we're talking about. Or if you agree, be sure to hit subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Don't hit me up on Twitter if you disagree, because I don't care. At the, F- <laughs> at the FF Dynasty. Because I don't care. Leave a comment in the comment section below. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with Equinemius St. Brown for your pleasure. All right, let's get on to prospect number three. 
Old Equinemius St. Brown. No, this isn't a P and Keel <laughs> skit <laughs> here. Key and Peel. Yo, so this is what equin- Equinemius stands for. A form of equanimity, meaning to stay calm and cool under pressure. I like yeah, that. I like that. He looks he looks calm and cool, judging by his photograph here and his <laughs> play on the field. Usually stays pretty calm. It's true. Seems pretty calm and cool in his interviews, combine and post combine. Sure, he's a, he's six five two fourteen, which is above the playing weight that he m- played with in sixteen a and probably more. seventeen no for doubt. sure. No doubt. Those the, pipes the, on the combine workout. The pipes looked beefed up a little. Absolutely. Twenty bench press reps. His no da- way he got twenty bench press. His reps. dad is was a Mister Universe, so runs in the family and mm-hmm. a fashion designer and a fashion designer. If that's what you're into. He speaks several different languages, which apparently NFL teams are, are skeptical about. Wait, you don't you only you don't only speak NFL football? Like they're mad if you have anything going on besides football. Yeah, can't really? have any distractions. Yeah. Skeptical about that? Yeah, they want. Meanwhile, to they're over here worried about Wonderlicks and stuff. And this cat can speak multiple languages. His dad. Right. He's got a caring father. Does have a caring father? Got him prepped for this combine. Twenty bench press reps. Got got him on a weight training. Hopefully, he doesn't have a PED test coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime soon, but it's probably good to go. Well, I'll he, take one. He crushed. Uh, he crushed the forty four four eight with the six five man at at, at two fourteen two fifteen is fantastic, Strong. and it's evident on the game tape of how fast he is. Very well, fast. Starting off with probably the knock on this guy is that he is big framed and 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 uh, but doesn't really play above the rim. The the box out from this guy and the and the low post game, if we're going to equate it to basketball, sure. probably isn't the strongest. Yeah, you, for a big man, you don't really see him winning too, too much in the air. You don't see him Contested. battle yeah. for the ball. It doesn't seem like he has that aggressive, this is my ball mentality. It's more of, I'm 6'5", it'll get to me, and then I'll catch but it. But to the other, to to go the other way, like he's very quick and fast. So like he doesn't rely on, on having to box people out. His it's athleticism his is better than most guys that are his size. Absolutely. So It's very fair. He's very quick and fast, so he, he never had to figure out that part of his game and he was a little bit when you watch 16 a little skinnier yeah no doubt well that's that's the thing for me is you're like seeing you're, a bigger 17 you're for, bigger at the combine to, so. to 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 get his best football tape you have to look in 2016 when deshaun kaiser was throwing him the ball not in 2017 with new quarterbacks so when you look with at a new a little bit less air whole new court, coaching all, staff and attempts everything. and catches for everything was way down right 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 yeah not only not only new kind of offense and it, a slow it down type scheme the per, if you're gonna knock Deion kane for his production in his in his year as the man you got to knock equanimius here with 33 catches well here here's what i'm saying though like i mean uh, i'll get back we'll get back to your point here in a second you can knock Deion kane a little bit but es esb was always the guy who was the last two years led his team in receptions y- almost every category yeah so the college dominators must be high I, I have no idea but like there just wasn't a ton of volume regardless of how you would look look around but in 16 when with the vo- with the volume with kane there was tons there was still a decent amount of volume in 17 with kane esb still was the leader in receptions in both years he led pretty much every category, 17 volume drop off, but still leads pretty much every receiving stat, um, except for average and TDs by one. He got edged out by one touchdown. And uh, Kevin Stevenson averaged more yards per catch in 16 and 17 in the, in, than him, but those are pretty much the only categories that he didn't dominate. Yeah, uh, for his there's just a lot lower volume to go around. Yeah, much less potent offense running around in Notre Dame than it is over right. there in Clemson, no doubt about it. And the reason I, you know, the reason obviously bring up the Deshaun Kaiser because at least he would, you know, got drafted and went and played NFL football last year. So that's what you know. You bring you go back to 16 to look for better tape, just like you go back to 16 and you find better tape on Kane because Deshaun Watson's dropping dimes. At least Kaiser slinging it to ESP and giving him chances to rack up some stats, but. You know, it, it's it's the ESB in 2016 tape, like you mentioned, it's not it's no secret for anybody that's watched any of it. But if you haven't and you're relying on some information from us, he is a lot skinnier in 2016 than what he shows up as in the the combine and the uh, post interview combines and stuff like that. The videos and stuff they put up on NFL dot com, the arms on this fella are completely different than what they were 18 months ago or so so he's definitely been working out with his pops or whoever with the team all of the above yeah um so he's but like you to that that point but to that point like you said he's 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 quicker 
than most people his size. He's more agile than most people with a six foot five, and he hasn't had to have the be- to be it. He hasn't had to, to develop to, a low post but, game to to get open and be open and right. be productive. But so now maybe there's potential for that development because now he's got some guns on that six five frame where he's there filling was, out a little. How can you develop a low post game when you need to be out on the wing shooting jumpers because you don't need to be down? <laughs> right, po- you're Kevin Durant. Right, you catch an elbow LeBron down James. low and you're falling down. So yeah. now that he's going to grow into his six foot five. Maybe there's a little bit more banging in his future to go along with some of that agility. And Jay Wayne just pulled up looking for some dominators and stuff. And I see 36 percentile player profiler that says the best comparable is Tyrell Williams. And I hadn't seen that. It's funny because that's it. He looks obviously it's an easy comparable because they're both like six four, six five, and just over two hundred pounds. But well, Tyrell doesn't really go up in the air either. But no, he does not. He does not do that well. But he is like looks like a gazelle Fast. on those crossing yeah. routes. And when you get him in space and he catches the ball, he's very right. hard to tackle. Even though he's not a tackle breaker, he's just right. hard to catch tackle up breaker. with, and he's very elusive because he's just he's like a gazelle, and nobody can really get close to him. Right. And you mentioned the crossing route. I mean, this dude, Equinemius, crushes a crossing he route. He sure does. He's super slippery in the open field. He's got that long speed. He's a long strider. Um, it's just that's probably one of the best aspects of his game is after the catch. Yeah, he's got he's got a good after the catch uh, part of his game. I just it's not so much like a like a Christian Kirk. I'm gonna stiff arm you in the face, kind of. No, after but the for catch, being so just, big and tall and fast, like he's, and, he's and I maneuverable. Do, like, yeah, exactly. and I think I think I do think he's hard to wrangle in the open field once he's once he's going. He's tough to bring down. I, you know, I think more wiry, uh, right? And uh, but, but the biggest thing again to me is like you see this big guy, his get off the ball is so fast for how big he is. It's explosive. And he's just it's just a a, a bigger kind of faster guy and if he can develop in maybe into this body a little bit and gain a little bit of a, a low post game and be a little more nasty and in, in a kind of one-on-one I'm going to post you up and and just go jump for the ball kind of deal he, he could really be a huge problem and, and be the best player in this draft absolutely like if you can couple that speed with with the big man game that he could learn that's a teachable asset you can't teach being six five exactly but you could teach somebody how to low post and body somebody but you also can't teach how fast he is it's just crazy when he gets his his get off the ball is just when you watch all the other big receivers, it's nowhere close exactly. to what he's has you going can't, on. That's, that's, that's well said. I love how you brought all that together because you can't teach things that he has and you can't teach what he's growing into. You know, you can teach a work ethic and you can teach a go get in the gym, but you can't teach that frame. He's got the super long arms or 33 inches, but he just he doesn't use them. Like he could, you know, if, maybe he can develop that part of his game. Those and are I'm, some huge arms. Right. Really long. Um, but and, and then let's take it to the hands here because there's I, w- I wanted to come in here and knock him for his hands. You see a lot of body catches. Like it's a lot of times that body, ball gets on his body. But there's not a ton of drops. And you do see a fair amount of hands catching to go on. And when you're that big and fast and tall and strong, I guess you just take the gamble here. You just you just you just that's what you're banking on is the big, tall, fast, strong yeah. part. I mean, yeah, no, I mean, I mean, I could bring up like Justin Hunter and Odell sure. Green Beckham, I mean, the, but the, the list goes on and on and on. Yeah, the guys yeah. Those are, two guys are completely opposite of this dude's personality and 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 what he's going his maturity level. Well, I, and you and know some I mean? people, there's this reports out there that he does, you know, maybe he's just kind of nonchalant about the game. Maybe he doesn't love it that much. Rather be studying another maybe language. He's got options. He can see he's bilingual, trilingual, maybe, and yeah. he's he's an artist. Apparently, but they did they they these, had fun. These kind of reasons are reasons that he's not up at the top and. You know, I just he's a guy who could possibly potentially at the end of the day end up as being one of the best receivers from this class. But instead, I'm probably taking him at more of a seven or eight approach here. Like I probably have I have him ahead of Deion Kane for the reason that I do believe that he, ESB, if, if things break right for him, could be a centerpiece and could be somebody's number one. So I'm going to take the chance on him I'm still taking Kirk and Anthony Miller over top of him because I believe in those guys game. All scar doesn't like that. She wants Equinemius. She's the Equinemius gal. She wants him to come to KC. <laughs> she said, we'll just move, move him in on the other side of uh, Sammy Watkins there and target him up. Scarlet's the dog in the background, but back to Equinemius and, and the reason that I'm going Kirk and, and maybe a- and Anthony Miller over Equinemius for me personally, I, again, I don't want to kill it, but I feel pretty safe on drafting Kirk. And I feel pretty safe on drafting Anthony Miller. Equinemius, there's a little bit more of questions in my mind and and all those kind of things of, you know, what he's going to be and how much he 
wants to be and what he's going to develop into and all that kind of stuff when I know I feel pretty good about those guys and you know at some point in drafts I'm fine with taking the risk and, and taking the upside in the Deion Kane but at some point I'm gonna you know especially early on when I'm in that kind of five six range of receivers and I might need one I'm gonna probably err on the side of caution right but you do acknowledge the upper top end potential of a, of a Equinemia sure. St. Brown here of what he could pretend like when he grows into that frame and he if he does focus in on if he beside you know focusing in on being a professional wide receiver versus other options that he may have in his life because he's a well-rounded man I'm right. not gonna hold that against him but I sure. understand what you're saying and so fact that you acknowledge what the top end could be but I, I get yeah the, I said earlier he could be the top one right. or two in this class, easy. Right, I, I, I and get a focal point. I get the, I get the Christian Kirk and and you know the the safety there and I, ESB to me, uh, he's going to be very very EQ. Uh, e, we're we're going, going EQ. EQ. I, I've said ESB a bunch of times, but yeah. I like I like, e, I like EQ better. I like EQ too. All right, so I can sw- I can switch it over. So it fits the fashion designing part <laughs> of his life. <laughs> yeah. yeah, ESB sounds like a beer. <laughs> right, right. This is true. Oh well, I'll, He's definitely I'll, more of a I'll wine the guy. IPA or the ESB. So hmm. t- to me, EQ is going to be one of those guys. I mean, I I, I can't EQ. agree. EQ, my bad. <laughs> EQ, I'm gonna take him over Dion Kane. In yeah, me too. Okay, I got him firmly planted at seven. I think behind Kirk and Miller for me, I'm going ESB at seven. I in like my, it. In, obviously, I haven't done Shark, and there's a couple of like Hamilton and and uh, Traquan, Traquan Smith. Smith, and that you know, I'm, we're at basically ten guys we've looked at. Uh, I know it's getting a little late in the process here, and we haven't been through them all. So right now, out of the ten guys I've gone through, he's firmly at seven for me. Yeah. Well, I I think for for me, I'm I will be able to to I want if I'm going to draft a rookie wide receiver because you guys know that I firmly do not like to do that. I will I will take a shot on on the old EQ because of the home. I'm going to take the home run cut on this guy for the absolute potential upside of the potential elite receiver that he could be. So you're saying you're taking him over Kirk? Or Anthony Miller? No, no, I'm, no. But like first the, out of the next group, right. I, I yeah, agree. Yeah. Yeah, I agree yeah, with yeah, the yeah, safety yeah. factor of the Anthony Miller and and the Christian Kirk for sure. So I, I to me right now, if I had to, if I was on the clock and I had to really go after it, I, I, I'm gonna go Christian Kirk, Anthony Miller, and then to me, I'm gonna go EQ next in the wide receivers because this take out all the other different safeties and all that you know safety yeah. versus home run cut. I'm gonna gamble here. There's that I'm I'm taking EQ next after those guys. All right. Well, Jay Wayne, close up shop where you got him, and let's we'll we'll get on to Dante Pettis to close the uh, show out. If I have to be honest, I think I got to take Deion King. Of course you do. But that's oh, that's a homer. Just, I'm a homer. Uh, I would probably At least have you're to, being honest about it. I probably have to advise. To I probably have to advise you to take Equinemius. Okay. Last year, early in the process, I was like. To be honest, I'm going to take Mike Williams over Corey Davis. When it came down to it and I was on the clock, I took Corey Davis. Yeah, but uh, you did advise everybody else listening at home to not do right, that. And you I said, did. I'm going to advise you to take, advise you to take Corey, Corey Davis, Davis I'm but I'm going to take Mike Williams. And you did not do that on the clock. Right. I did trade back into the first round to get Mike, <laughs> Mike Williams when he, when he fell. Yeah, but uh, I got two draft picks in the first this year. <laughs> I know where the heartstrings are. Yeah, <laughs> he got me. That's the problem. That's why we don't play in very other. many leagues together. We got to keep it to a minimum. I know. It's funny. All right. Well, that'll do it for Dion Kane. Let's go ahead and take a quick break, and we'll be back with Dante Pettis for your pleasure. Oh yeah, worked out with a dumbbell yesterday. <laughs> I feel vigorous. <laughs> if you want to get in contact with us, you can hit us up at Twitter. Or at, on Twitter. At Twitter. At Twitter on the FF Dynasty. <laughs> Swing on by at can, my Twitter. <laughs> you can find us at the FF Dynasty. We all have individual handles. You can find me at IMC Myers. You can find Jay Wayne at Jay Wayne's World. And you can maybe find Big Co. at Dynasty Big Co. Lights are off. <laughs> Lights are typically <laughs> off over there. It's not Motel 6. Curtains are shut. No. <laughs> all right. Well, let's get on to our fourth and final prospect of the day. We're going to get into a little Dante Pettis. Uh, revered as a solid route runner probably one of the better punt returners in this class along with uh our the guy we already talked about and christian Christian kirk Kirk. a great attribute from both of those guys and it's really exciting to see the ball and kick returning right phenomenal it's really to see the fun to see the ball in those guys hands you feel the excitement in the crowd in the air they could go at any point in time and the whole team knows it so they're all blocking their ass off it's really a fun thing to watch as far as the whole team aspect goes speaking of he is electric fun thing to watch the video of all nine punt returns for Mm. to set a career mark for the ncaa that's a fun video and 
Casey says probably a lot when something's definitely, and he's definitely one of the best, <laughs> if not the best, kick returner. Him and Christian Kirk are leading the pack in this group. I don't care yeah. what anybody says. Saquon, uh, Rashad Penny. Yeah, they're good, but Dante Pettis is, is when it comes to actually doing those returns or is nasty. Yeah. So this guy didn't participate in the combine. I think he had a little hamstring issue or little some injury. sort of a leg injury. But, I mean, and it's and it's kind of hard to figure out what this guy's weight and height is. Yeah. Various discrepancies across all of the boards. Sure. There's no way he's 6'3, I don't think. No, I got him at either 6'1, 195, or 6 foot 189. Um, he does, I mean, he's all legs, though, so he might be 6'2. I'm t- this, this cat. He's either 6'1 or 6 foot. I'm, I'm going to give him 6'2. He's not. I saw a screenshot of him walking oh. into a bank, <laughs> you know, right there beside the little meter. <laughs> on it's the, the wall. socks that trick you. <laughs> yeah. Long yeah. socks. Long yeah. Socks. <laughs> He's like, uh, can I get some extra long socks? It makes me look taller. Yeah. Well, so it's tough to gauge how fast this guy really is. I don't think he's quite a burner, but he, he's got some solid speed to his Good game. Good enough like, speed, uh, but not, doesn't doesn't make me like – he's not a guy that I think can rely on just being so fast that he's just a vertical burner. Oh, definitely not. Down the field, uh, but he is, a, again, revered as a solid route runner, and, and you can see that in his game. Yeah, Another, for, for a guy that's returning kicks – He's not scaring the defense with his speed, but the combination... The field vision. Right. The combination of his change of pace, the combination of his vision and ability to see things opening up in front of him, and then now his route running makes him hard to defend. He's not scaring you with his speed for sure, but he's the combination of everything he brings to the table, the defender's like, I don't know what this dude's about to do. Yeah, no, it's well, like, true. They classify him as a really having a, a quite a diverse route tree. Um, watching, I didn't see that. Watching all the tape that you can find on him, it's it's mostly a bunch of comebacks and, and out and routes. outs and then some vertical, some vertical shots, corners. I think yeah. Well, a, a really good part of his game is that either post or corner that he runs, and he'll either fake the opposite he's got a of solid what he's fake. doing. It, his fake is solid. It's he it's, it's crisp. It's, it's hardly any momentum lost in what he's doing, and it's just a it's a very quick. Jab inside or jab outside, and then explosion on the rest of the route. And that's he, stutter he wins, and go. He wins well with that play, either to the corner or the post, or maybe even a little bit more of, of a straight down the field uh, go route kind of deal. But with that little kick inside or outside, he, he's very efficient with that and hardly loses any speed. And uh, that that's one thing I definitely noticed. I agree with that. Game. And it like on that break, like you said, that fake. His to me, his arms are all over the place. Mid conversation pop right there. I like it. His <laughs> arms are heavy. all over the place. It's like a perfect camouflage for what he's really doing. Like it's almost like a head fake on the cut, but it's his arms are fa- like yeah. he his arms are flailing while he's running his routes. And then so in addition to that, his solid body control. So like yeah, when he fakes that post or fakes that corner and goes the opposite direction. The wide the defender is basically just I know you're about to make a move I just don't know which way you're going and oh you faked me that way and now you went this way it's he's he he does he does make some defenders look silly and it's it's he's just got he's got solid fakes yeah he, yeah he, I like his bag he of sells tricks. it he's very fluid he's and I like his he's got a whole bag of moves to 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 gain uh, a little bit of separation maybe for his lack of true top end speed right I mean but. Uh, even though he has a, maybe not the true, true top end speed, but he does he does get up on the def- defenders in a hurry. Yeah, he's pressing he them up, pretty well. He eats up the cushion right. well, which is a, a big factor in route. Gets running. those legs, but he's all legs. Gets pretty those fast, moving. pretty fast off the line of scrimmage as Sucks. well. He's got good hip hip sinkage. You hear yeah. you hear announcers even saying that. You see him break down the routes and well, he sunk his hips here and and, and the the double move. You, you see him make defenders fall down. Sure. Um, it, so, it's pretty much the same movie puts on dudes every time. It's a stutter yep. and go to get that outside leverage. Um, but, I mean, the change of direction is pretty good. Like you guys mentioned, he's a long strider. He can make the, the wild one-handed catch while his other arm's being held. I feel like he's fairly decent in contested catches. Sometimes, I don't know, we kind of went back and forth on, on the strength of his hands. You I think, see him I think drop okay. some. I think it's okay. It's really highlighted in his draft profile. Like he's a stick-and-stay natural right. pass catcher. I don't. I you don't could, necessarily see that. I see that. some drops here and there, and I see some balls knocked out of his hands here or there. And to highlight that, it to me is like 
what are you talking about? I don't, I don't, I don't see it. I don't, I don't. And they say his concentration and traffic is great. Like I also don't really see that. Um, I, mean, I, do I don't like think, him going over dropped, the middle of the field. I don't think he's like a, he has terrible hands by any means. But to, for that, for that to be a highlight of his, right. it was. Yeah, I was I, taken I, aback by that. That's funny. I, I have um, written down that his finesse moves with a tough mindset are super solid. But I didn't see strong vice grip hands. But he doesn't necessarily have to have them because he's creating separation. Yeah. And he doesn't have. He's not fighting that contested catch on most of his routes where he's run a good route and the quarterback puts a good ball out there because he's got space where he could just grab it and but not I, have yeah. to necessarily vice it. He doesn't have to Des Bryant it away from somebody. Yeah. A lot of a lot of wide open catches on those like a lot of deep like intermediate not deep outs intermediate outs mm -hmm. and kind of quick comebacks are a lot of what his tape makes up. And then there's some of that vertical game in there. Um, but a lot of the times he's just wide open in a big space in a zone. Pac-12 defense. Yeah. 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 There, I mean, but there are some contested sure, and, and catches he, that you he, can he highlight earned, and see. Well, just like you said with Kirk when they're talking about busted coverages, he's earned some of those busted zone things of, of being great at running or around. Or just earned, look, stuff. yeah, earned a good, uh, earned a good a, cushion. Earned that separation. Excuse me. Earned that separation for a nice easy catch. He right. earned that easy catch so he didn't have to fight off the defender at the top of the route or the bottom of the route if he's coming back or wherever because he earned it. Um, but I, Jay Wayne mentioned hip sinkage and it made me think I was watching some video on this guy and I switched windows and wasn't paying attention for a second and some vi other videos started automatically playing and I, and I don't really I didn't think about it to say this so I'm saying it now so I don't have his perfect name but it was like the who dat somebody video breakdown guy where he puts a little video of himself in the corner while mm -hmm. he's talking and that's the first video I've ever seen of him do, doing anybody and he had a he he was stopping the tape, slowing it down, showing you stuff and drawing stuff on the screen. I thought he did a really good job. I didn't agree with everything he said, but some of the things he said I thought was point on, spot on. And one of the things he just highlighted was uh, uh, basically a double move, like Jay Wayne was talking about, where he went up and before he faked out, he dropped those hips real well, and the dude froze the frame and showed you what was going on, and then he broke out and he changed directions again and created some good separation. If I knew the guy's name, I'd bring it out a little better than that, but you could probably find it. But anyway, that Pettis's change of direction is route he's, running. He's very, definitely, he's very fluid. Definitely something that he, you know, something that's going to help translate him into the next level of being able to get on the field. I would it, imagine he'd have a solid three cone drill if, if he doesn't he participate. In right, one. he doesn't miss any steps or miss any. Like he's he's very quick in in all the movements that he does. He doesn't waste much movement. He's very he is very yeah, fluid. Good, well, well, well put. And this guy is is versatile. If in nothing yeah. else, every single play he's at a different place on the line of scrimmage. Like he plays out wide. He plays in the slot. He's all over the place. They send him in motion. Like he's he. he you really if they're not highlighting him well, you have to search and try and find where he is because he's not just on the right side of the formation. He's all over the place. Yeah. Um. And 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 then he's great after the catch. I mean, that's shown in his, in his right. return ability. You got you just got to get him in, in a Christian Kirk kind of similar situation where you can kind of get him more in that kind of punt return field vision mode. You just yeah. get the ball in his hands with some space and maybe give him an opportunity to set up his blockers and do his thing. Oh, no, well, like that's just what Jay Wayne said when we first got started about his punt return and the blockers and the, the excitedness of the entire other 10 people on the field with him. If when you if you watch that that video of all nine punt returns for the NCAA record, that's what they were. Some of that you could hear some of the play by play guys saying in the background was like these guys. It, it, you know, they talk about it. The special teams unit talks about like every time this guy catches the punt, we got a chance to score. So they they know they're efforting together. Right. Those other side, those other ten people are working together. They the blocks are following him downfield, and like you said, he can set them up. And what they're attempting to try to, you know, not that every every special teams doesn't, they don't want to get back a punt, but there's a morale boost in every different situation in all different types of sports. And when you got a guy that back there that can, you know, make it happen, everybody's like, all right, well, this block is actually worth it, even though it's farther away from the play than normally it would even matter. And so translating to the NFL as a pure week one starting wide receiver, probably not necessarily for Pettis, but the the kick returning i believe will get him will 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 put him on the field as a rookie and then well, he works sure. his way up from there and if if he's if he's a solid effort guy and uh, and getting in there and with the playbook and then maybe there's an injury in front of him potentially dante pettis is on the field earlier than i believe he probably will be yeah I, I, something that we always like and always talk about is you know a player's ability to return punts and special teams and all that kind of stuff to get 
him opportunities to be on the field and opportunities to score to gain him more opportunities. So that's, that's something that you always love, and it can get Dante Pettis on the field. Uh, but I, I, I think I kind of just worry about a little bit of this guy's role and, and the fantasy points that will come where and where they'll come from with Dante Pettis. Like, I, don't, I just I don't see him as a guy that I really – now maybe he is in that third round again, like you were talking with Deion Kane. Thirty-seven. And then, that's then, I, then I don't really have a problem pick, taking averaging him pick four one right now at all. Like I'm, I'm yeah. fine with putting him on my team, but like I'm sliding him way back there because I just you know I I just I don't know where the fantasy points. I don't think he his game to me right now when I turn it on doesn't like like when you when I turn on Equinemius or any of those other guys we talked about before him or even Deion Kane. Like I see a huge ceiling with Deion Kane. I just don't know where the ceiling is with with Pettis. Like I like his game and I like the punt returning and all that kind of stuff. I just worry about like how he's going to earn a role as a receiver. Like he just he just seems like he's going to be kind of average as to me when I turn on. He just looks like an average NFL receiver. No doubt, but at the same time, if he was to fall in the right system, sure, sure, uh, you sure. know, if he was to fall in the right system, a la like a, a Wes Welker wasn't Wes Welker until Belichick got his hands on him. You know, somebody like that, you could see a future for, and that's what I just said a minute ago. Like it's going to take maybe an injury puts him on the field earlier than what you would think. This guy's not going to walk into the gym or walk into the 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 building week one after you know the draft and be like, yeah, I'm 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 starting on Sunday. Right. You know what I mean? He's that's not that's not how he's his profile is not going to break down for, for him. He's not going to be an early pick. To, to me, it's no, definitely not. And. To me, like we were talking, we were talking about safety and home run cuts and all sure. that kind of stuff. Like, he just doesn't fall into any of those categories for me. Right. I don't think he's safe, and I don't really think he's a home run cut. Right. So, like, it's it's yeah. hard for me to but in justify the, right spot, the He could have a great future. Sh- sure, yeah. and so could anybody in this draft. Yeah, yeah. Solid. It's a solid draft class. And I get it. There's not a lot. That, and I could be dead wrong. I like his route running. I, I don't. I'm not hating on the kid at all. I just, I, I just nothing pop. Like when I, when I get put on the tape and I watch, start watching guys, it's either like, oh, I like this guy, right. or I don't like this guy right. because of I, what I see in the potential and 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 all that. Like he just doesn't to me. Does he doesn't give me the feeling of, oh, I can't wait to put this guy on my team. I hope this keeps quiet because he's above average and exactly. nobody's talking about how above average he is. I know some people differ, yeah. and some people have him as the number one prospect in the draft. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't see that. I agree with you that there's not a ton of flashiness. There's not a ton of, of pop to his game. You have to you have to sit there and watch through several games and then you'll see some you'll see some flashes. There's some flashes, but for it's not sure. consistent enough. But the crispness of the route running and, and I think there's solid hands and, and the efforting is definitely not an issue. Like I one of the best things to watch about this dude is his blocking. Great. Solid blocker. Good point. Crushing blocking. Great point, Jay Wayne. Busts off, you know, springs Gaskin for a bunch of Big runs, not that Gaskin needs much help. Well, but if we're gonna sit here and talk about Washington and the tape you want to watch, I mean, it's Gaskin. You, you've been I've been watching all this Pettis tape and it's just Gaskin, Gaskin, Ga- Gaskin's right. amazing. Right, love this guy. <laughs> He's so fun to watch. Like that's the special player on this team. He's yeah. incredible. But I mean, a lot of those big runs you see Pettis is downfield. Yeah, no, for sure. Block, his his dude rarely makes a tackle. It's it's really good to see. The, the the comeback to the ball, he's he's decent on a scramble drill. He's going to come back and help his quarterback out. Another knock, though, you don't always see him getting two feet in bounds. He doesn't have the two toe drag thing going on. There's a lot of college a lot of college catches that won't count in the NFL that you see on the film. He does have good extension. He doesn't always unnecessarily leave the ground, which I like. But he doesn't always get those two feet in bounds. That's something he's going to have to work on. But I think. I think he's gonna put in the time and the effort. He's he's sure. renowned for his work. Well spoken kid. He is he's a little soft spoken though. They right. they question his some, alpha maleness, right. right? And whether or not he can be that alpha male receiver, I don't think so. But he, he you know he's he's definitely. A, a, he can't a, have too many alpha males on a team. True. That's true. true. But this kid, he comes from an athletic family. His father won four gold gloves as a center fielder, played 11 seasons in the major leagues. His cousin, Austin Pettis, played four years for the Rams. So he's in a family that knows how to be a professional sure. athlete and sure. take care of your body and do the things that are necessary from a, from a professional standpoint, which that, that's very appealing. And I think he's going to get on the field because of this punt returning sure. and blocking. He's got the intangibles. But, what, but to your point that you made a long time ago, like I don't know – 
how much of that is going to translate to fantasy points. But well, I mean, if we're he talking, could be four, a really good player for a team. Right. I just don't know That's if he's going to equate. I think to you my, have a career, but at four one, yeah. But you know, I, I mean, fourth round wide receiver here. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, there's. I mean, like, how how in the world did Danny Amendola ever help anybody's fantasy team? You know, it happened. Oh, well, he helped that fantasy team last year. Me too. So, but <laughs> like sometimes a guy's the sum of his parts. Instead of just having that big uh, that bully factor on one thing, he does very very well. Right, and like. So he's obviously he's a career punt return leader for the NCAA. His kickoffs are right there with it, with maybe five touchdowns, nine nine punt returns. So he's obviously really really good with the ball in his hands, with looking at the field in front of him. The his league vi- needs Cordell Patterson. His, right, his vision is elite because. If it wasn't, he wouldn't be getting those types of plays. Right. So his vi- he's got elite vision with the ball in his hands, and if you add that with the route running, and add that with the right team, the right spot, the right system, this guy's got a good. He might have a really good future, but when you're talking about your fantasy football team, you have to play in the odds. And like y'all are saying here, I completely agree. It's it may not ever happen for your fantasy team with with this guy on your right. team. You know, I mean, it may not I, ever happen, but it could be really good. And it, if it's sure, but that's just, but Chris Brown running in solid hands, you know, is, it could is evolve. It, yeah, that's a nice thing to have. It's a nice piece. Great to the building puzzle. blocks. It's a great building great block. Building but blocks. I mean, this just it. He's almost gotta fill almost out. He's any gotta of these players in this draft, or later round picks in the draft, or later round picks in any draft, like you know, it's just it's situational, and sometimes it doesn't work out because of the scheme you go to, or. You know, yeah, you don't sure. get a chance or all that kind of stuff. It might, maybe it takes a couple of years for you to develop all, all those kind of things. But what you're saying, like, I understand it, but like, that's anybody who's yeah. playing division one college football for the most part, who's a, who's a top air end athlete here. Yeah. Um, but so we, we talked about, um, you know, Dion Kane and Mike Williams being, you know, Dion, uh, Williams left and Dion Kane didn't quite fill into that alpha dog role. Well, you just had a guy in John Ross who was a first round pick in the league um, in 2016, I guess that was. Yeah. That was a 16 Well, no, season. he was drafted in 2017. But it was but a he 16 played season. 16, right? Yeah, he played and in 16. 17, Pettis is on his own. So in, in 16, John Ross has 81 catches for 1,100 yards and 17 touchdowns. Has a nice season. And Pettis has a great season as well 53 catches. 822 yards, averages 15 a catch, has 15 touchdowns, so has a really nice season. But then the, not that much changes, at least as far I don't know if the offensive line, I'm not have studied up on my Washington as much as right, I should be. Right. I don't know if the line maybe lost some players, but they didn't lose Gaskin, and they lost, but they did lose John Ross. We know they lost John Ross. And the numbers, they go up to 63 catches, 761 12 yards average so all that stuff basically goes down except for the amount of receptions that he got and the touchdowns go to seven yeah so you would like to see a guy in this situation you would like to see him be able to fill into that john ross role yeah and get those kind of targets and excel with them obviously john ross was a first round draft pick and he was a burner right and all that kind of stuff four two two but again just another kind of mm, fell into him maybe a little bit more of mediocrity and average mm-hmm. uh, once he became the guy once he became the guy With the same is, quarterback but this is why he's not being drafted exactly in, in the, the top. first round right and yeah when you're others. the guy you see the best defender every play too right so all right well does that do it for dante pettis yeah so i mean else? let's well, i mean let's we you got where do you we just we're basically at 10 now yeah and we've we've walked through five we got kirk at five we got miller at six we have esb at seven you have kane at seven basically so Pettis has fallen in in line here. That beer's really coming up, huh? <laughs> yeah, I just had a burp. <laughs> I mean, Gallup. I got to take Gallup. So you are right. You are right. I, we I, we cut out Gallup in this conversation, and I and I believe maybe I maybe I put give Gallup the nod over ESB. Yeah. Just out of just, I feel like Safeness? Gallup's pretty safe as well. I'm taking the guy growing into the six five frame. That's fine. It's hard to argue with that. Sure, it it's is very hard. hard. We made a nice case for him, I suppose. People sure. like him. There's there's a lot to like around there, but Gallup's Name just cachet. really good at everything. Yeah. Um. So, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I said I have firmly ESB at seven. I'm going ESB at eight. Okay. Kane at nine. Pettis at ten. Out of the guys we've broken down. Yeah. Where I'm there. I think I've I've done some further analysis on some other guys. I think that I think I'd probably have to put Traquan Smith up in here above Pettis. Um, I think he's got a little bit more explosive ability. I don't want to speak too much on it because I'm not prepared to, but, I mean, that guy is, is definitely deserves 
uh, a, a conversation in in top ten. Yeah, and it's uh, given everything we we just kind of talked about about Pettis here. I'm gonna take a swing for the fence on a on a six five two twenty eight Alden Tate before I slow grab. forty slow forty. That's all right. I, there's Kelvin. Alden Tate's like the opposite of Brown. Like yeah. they're the same size and height, but Brown's fast but can't post up. But and Tate, Tate can Tate post could be up a, like he, a mofo. He could be a Kelvin Benjamin or something like that, and or, I can, I could take touchdowns. Oh, yeah, like I mean, I like Tate. I like Tate. I liked just, him a lot before the combine in the net, and then nobody likes him now because he ran a slow. This is what happens again. with my, guys like Michael Gallup, though. You're just you you get knocked for just being good across the board right, and not right. really great at anything. He's and we, average at everything. We forgot it. We I, I forgot to even put him in this ranking because I wasn't even thinking yeah. about it. But he's he, a really good receiver. In my but, opinion, he does it probably deserves to be six or seven there, and I'm going to put him at seven. I'll put ESB at eight, Kane at nine, Pettis at ten. Yeah, I think I'll flop Kane just because I got to, but I, I, can't your blame boy. I can't blame you. But Pettis is definitely a 10 for me overall. Out I of mean, the guys we broke down. Right, and I tried to defend I him, but I still have I think he would slide quite a last. bit more once I break down more guys. That's possible. Yeah, like, that's I think, fair. I that's think fair. I could slide him to 11 just for Traquan off the rip. But All right. All right, we're going to close up shop. Yeah, I think that'll do it. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone. Hope you enjoyed our rookie wide receiver breakdown. We all have individual Twitter handles. Tell us how you feel. At IMC Myers, at Dynasty Big Co., at Jay Wayne's World. You're listening to the FF Dynasty's Married to the Game. We also have a Twitter handle for that, at the FF Dynasty. If you're listening on YouTube, please hit subscribe. If you're listening to the podcast, also hit subscribe. Go on iTunes, hit that five-star review. You can catch uh, catch us on any of your platforms of choice, Podbean, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, all of the above. Please and thank you. Till next time, you've been listening to the F. I've already said that. <laughs>